Welcome to our latest ABI Research Snapshot, where we spotlight critical findings and the latest research from our global team of analysts. Uh, in this edition, Principal Analyst James Hodgson will take a quick look at how location platforms offer mobility operators new capabilities to optimize their existing operations, deliver meaningful competitive differentiation, and enable new revenue streams for smart mobility services. First question, getting right into it, James, uh, what are the primary current challenges facing smart mobility operators? Yes, yeah, so in many ways, smart mobility has been one of the more successful technology trends in the automotive industry in recent years. Electrification is only just taking off. High autonomous vehicles haven't materialized, but smart mobility and especially ride hailing have just become a commonplace part of everyday life for many people across the globe. Um, but while it's become you know, a widely used mobility mode, it is struggling and it is in a bit of a crisis when it comes to profitability. You know, even these platforms have enormous market share, just don't tend to make money. And that very much boils down to the, the avenues of competition that ride hailing operators have, the different levers they can pull when they want to take market share away from their competitors. The first option they have is a trip subsidy. You know, they can offer trips at very low margin or sometimes even offer trips below cost to consumers to try and you know, steal away rides from competitors. The second option that they have is uh, uh, driver incentives, you know, uh, offering the drivers, even drivers who they hire directly or drivers who serve as contractors, offering them a greater share of the overall trip fee. And as you can imagine, when you, you know, combine those two together, you have a, a pretty costly and expensive way um, of, of driving up market share. And uh, we've seen in almost every region that has been the primary uh, objective of most of the ride hailing platforms. Uh, when you combine that with the fact that there's a very low barrier to entry, that most ride hailers don't actually own any physical infrastructure, but anyone who can build an app and has some VC funding behind them can enter the market. It's left ride hailing in a, in a permanent state of poor profitability. There were some secondary problems, especially uh, as regards the, the, the integration of uh, ride hailing as a mobility mode alongside the existing mix of transit options that consumers have, uh, whether that's personal car use, but more specifically public transit use. And you know, when a ride hailing uh, offering is introduced that doesn't mix well with the existing transport options and doesn't mix well with public transit, first of all, it creates a lot of frustration for, for consumers, uh, but also it can create a, a difficult relationship between the ride hailing operator and local and city governments. And James, how can a location platform help smart mobility operators optimize their operations? Yeah. Well, you think about it from a pretty high level, you know, all smart mobility trips happen in a broader location context. It's about getting from A to B within the context of a, of a city or some kind of urban space. So what a good location platform can do is help ride hailing operators and smart mobility service operators to better understand and optimize to that location context. Now, very often that involves the creation of some kind of uh, you know, application specific map, a map that takes into account all of those details that matter for the uh, completion of a successful trip. So when we think about the kind of attribution that might be relevant, uh, for example, taxi lanes, you know, if your smart mobility service is allowed to use taxi lanes and the geography in, in question, you know, that could obviously give you a, a competitive edge. Um, as regards throughput or you know, just going to and picking up consumers from the places where they expect to be, to be picked up from. Um, other examples of attribution, you know, it's all very well and good knowing where a certain building is, but identifying you know, the right points of ingress and egress, designating the kinds of pickup and, and drop off points, you know, all of these can help to uh, you know, result in more uh, efficient journeys, more efficient routing. Um, and that is a more sustainable way to, to get you know, a price advantage over competitors. And uh, also you can deliver more accurate ETAs, that's estimated time of arrival. That's a really important challenge at the moment. Um, if the ETA isn't accurate and the consumer is sitting there and they're waiting for their trip and nothing's arrived at the time when they've expected, they'll often 
cancel the trip just at the last moment. And that creates a lot of deadhead losses. It's very inefficient for the operator. So having that kind of location platform with the right attribution and the right live data in it to provide accurate ETAs is a great way to compete, not just on pricing, on chip subsidy, but on the quality of service that's delivered uh, to the consumer. Another example would be uh, having attribution that has uh, places. What do we mean by places? Well, people don't really travel around from address to address uh, in a city. They go from one named place uh, to another. So having a map that has that level of detail, that you know, has uh, a curated set of uh, different places that consumers can navigate by is another good way to add to that quality of service and refine and optimize the, the core mobility offering. So how can smart mobility operators uh, tap into new revenue streams using a location platform? Yeah, well, as we said before, the, the core offering is the mobility business or the trips business. Uh, but there are many other ways that you can reuse those same assets uh, in the fleet uh, to deliver other on-demand services besides mobility. So if you think of delivery, it could be grocery delivery, parcel delivery, food or takeaway uh, delivery. You, know, you can take the same assets that you use for trips and apply them to those kinds of services as well. And that's a great way to drive up utilization. How often are those assets that you've already paid for you know, up and around and making money for you? Because there are certainly you know, times of the day when you, know, you can't make good use of the fleet just to provide trips. So having the ability to offer these other services can ramp up your utilization. And once again, it's another sustainable way to enable differentiation, you know, not just on, on, not just in matters related to the price of the trip or driver subsidy, but also in the range of different um, you know, services that you can offer to consumers. So where does location come in? Well, once again, it's about getting the right map, building the right map with the right attribution and applying the business logic accordingly. But for a delivery service, very often the attribution, the kind of details about the environment that you want to capture in your map are slightly different. So you might want to understand, you know, for example, what are different spending habits? What's the demographics of the different areas? You know, where are the kinds of people who are most likely to make use of these delivery services located? And how can you target and allocate the resources that you have more efficiently and more effectively? And finally, how important is the role of a data marketplace in a location platform? I think for smart mobility operators and for ride hailing operators, it's, it's very important. Um, you know, a good data marketplace you know, has two sides to it. First of all, it's somewhere where you can buy and ingest new data sets. And second of all, it's somewhere where you can upload and sell the data that you generate. So some of the things that we've already mentioned is how important it is to capture the right attribution, capture the right kind of local data and local info to make your core mobility offering and also any new delivery offerings as efficient and effective as possible. For example, we talked about ETAs and getting an accurate ETA and you know, retaining the customer um, by providing them with an accurate expectation for when they can be picked up. Well, one of the factors that influences that is the weather. And so a good data marketplace, you know, with access to uh, weather data sets, you know, not just historic trend data, but real time weather data, you know, can be a good way for uh, smart mobility operators to ingest that into their workflows, update their ETAs and make sure that they're more accurate. Now, as far as the other side of a data marketplace, um, you know, smart mobility operators are really well positioned to take advantage of this opportunity of monetizing the data sets that they, they generate. It's something that people are very familiar with in the passenger car space, you know, making money from connected car data. But smart mobility operators are perhaps even better positioned to take advantage of that trend. They have obviously 100% penetration of connectivity in their fleet. And secondly, they have a very high level of utilization. Whereas a passenger car will be in use 5% of the day, maybe once in the morning and once in the evening. These smart mobility vehicles are in constant use. And so they're constantly collecting very useful data that can provide useful insights into the road situation for a variety of different road adjacent industries. 
So you could have the example of a local government who wants to understand traffic flows in their city. They want to maybe cut congestion in certain areas. Probe data from ride hailing vehicles can be obviously very helpful there. It could be, you know, an agency that's responsible for road maintenance, wanting to identify traffic patterns so they can target their budgets for updating and maintaining road infrastructure to the places that have the highest degree of use. Once again, smart mobility data, absolutely vital there. Another example could be retail. Maybe some kind of retail company wants to understand, you know, where do their customers come from? What parts of the city, maybe do they already have you know, great engagement with customers and are there some areas, some demographic uh, that they aren't very well engaged with? And uh, you know, obviously trip data, uh, smart mobility probe data can be essential in, in answering those questions. Overall, that offers smart mobility uh, operators and ride hailing operators access to a whole new revenue stream. Uh, they can take the data that their vehicles are already generating that they don't generate as a byproduct of their core operation and put it to work for them generating revenue via data marketplace. Thank you, James. And to get a longer view on what we've covered in this brief snapshot, we invite you to watch our full length on-demand webinar sponsored by Here Technologies by visiting abi.link slash mobility operators.